Hello lovely humans, how are you doing today? I hope you're all having a wonderful, not super stressful, happy, awesome day. And if you're not, I hope I can help cheer you up a little bit. Today I'm back with an old friend and very special guest, Sir Sugarcane. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that he was the first stuffed animal that I actually started adding into my videos. And I wanted to bring him back because he's obviously awesome. We all know how awesome you are, Sir Sugarcane. You don't have to tell anyone. But also because what I'm gonna be talking about today is the importance of having pride in who you are and not being afraid to be yourself. And the one thing that taught me that message was my experience being a fake person. Now you're probably sitting there right now thinking, what are you talking about? You're gonna sit here and tell us how you were once a fake person? That's gonna make you look really bad, Kelly. But there was a period of my life where I was basically a fake person. And I wanna to explain to you guys that it really taught me a lot about myself and I wanna to explain to you guys why I lived my life like that for so long. This topic was actually a topic that I asked your opinion on. I reached out to you guys on my social media and I asked what you think I should talk about in my next video. I really want my videos to be more interactive and I want you guys to tell me what you want me to talk about because I'm here to help you guys. I'm here to reinforce positivity. I'm here to share my experiences and I want us to be friends and communicate together Together. So feel free to comment below on this video and let me know what you want me to talk about next time as well And I will listen to you So to really get into this topic and to explain to you guys what I'm talking about I have to go back in time way back into my childhood when I was a kid I was very imaginative and I was also kind of a big dork. I grew up loving cartoons I loved video games. I loved anime Pokemon was basically my everything from a really young age Sonic the Hedgehog and I spent my childhood playing pretend with my little sister and my best friend who lived across the street and the three of us would pretend to be characters and have a blast and it was just an awesome childhood but when I entered probably about second or third grade I started to struggle with social anxiety I actually made a video on my channel about this a few years ago so I could post the link to that video as well and basically I just found that when I was in a school setting probably starting God, probably starting all the way back in second grade, I would just feel really afraid to express my interests and the things that I liked in front of my peers. I don't know why, I don't know why it started. I mean, I did go to Catholic school when I was younger from second through probably around seventh grade. And the school that I went to just had a lot of really sort of clicky kids. And you wouldn't think that in second and third grade kids would be clicky, but it happens. And I just started to feel really insecure. And if I ever expressed something that I did like, people would make fun of me. I got bullied. And eventually I just became really, really shy and quiet and closed off. And I was kind of the kid who would sit in the back of the class and just kind of draw cartoons and not talk to anybody. And it was to the point where I would actually be having heart palpitations going to school because I was just so afraid of being around my peers. And, but, in a way, I was already being a fake version of myself because I would go home and I would be super outgoing with my sister and my best friend and I would make all these home videos and I was totally confident in being myself and expressing all of my interests. But in school, it was a different story. Now, this did not stop when I got a little bit older and entered high school. I actually did go to a public high school. And by this point in time, I was probably around 14. So of course I was maturing, I was developing more mature interests, and I started really caring about the way that I looked. And when I was 14, I started getting into the modeling industry. I was going on a lot of auditions. I traded in my glasses for contacts. I started wearing makeup. And all of a sudden, I started getting attention from people around me. And I wasn't used to this attention because usually I was the sort of shy, quiet girl that blended into the back corner and was always picked last in gym class. <laughs> So it was weird to be getting attention from people. But here is the thing, lovely humans. I was still scared. I might have looked different. I might have had more confidence in myself because I was getting attention because of the way that I looked. But I wasn't confident in expressing my personality still. So I was still kind of holding back. In high school, I wasn't really viewed so much as a dork because I didn't let any of my personality show but I was viewed as someone who was stuck up because everyone knew that I was into modeling, but I was also very quiet. So instead of people thinking I was just shy and kind of geeky, people thought that I was stuck up and full of myself, which was not the case. I was just walking through the halls of high school, secretly having a panic attack every day and nobody knew it. 
I started to slowly come out of my shell towards maybe my sophomore year of high school when I started to do musicals. When I started singing and getting into musical theater, I for the first time found an aspect of myself that made me feel confident that I wasn't afraid to show people. I did start to develop friendships finally, but I would definitely not say I was very popular. Basically, I was still too shy to really express my personality, but I was able to slowly realize that people did accept me for who I was in a way, and doing theater was something that I was proud of, I wasn't afraid to show the world, and I was able to slowly gain confidence from that, but I will still tell you guys that I didn't act like my true authentic self, and I was not open, and I didn't kind of you know, flaunt all the things that make me unique and make me me because I was still too afraid to. So I finished up high school and realized that since theater was the one thing that gave me confidence that I was used to, that I should probably go to college for it. Didn't put much thought into it, but at the time that is where I thought I wanted to go. So I ended up getting accepted into a musical theater program in Pennsylvania and I went there for two years. Now, when I started college, this is probably when I was sort of the fakest version of myself. I just immediately gravitated towards the popular pretty party girls because I thought, well, I'm a girly girl and this will make me fit in and this will make me cool. But to be honest with you guys, I didn't have anything personally in common with those girls. I hung out with them, but I never felt like they truly accepted me. Yeah, we took pictures together. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, we did stupid early college stuff. But I never really felt like I was developing connections with these people. I just hung out with them because I thought I should. And eventually I just got really lonely. I felt like I was living this life that just didn't feel true. It didn't feel authentic. And I realized that people weren't really accepting me. And people still thought that I was stuck up when in reality I was just still too shy and I had these walls up and I didn't know how to break them down. I still remember the feeling of just just hanging out in a group of people and having nothing to say, wanting to say so much but feeling like someone was just taping my mouth shut, like I was incapable of speaking. I just felt that everything that I had to say had no value and it wouldn't be accepted. And I don't know why I felt that way. And eventually over time I started to realize it's because I wasn't really accepting the parts of myself that make me who I am. So over time, my interest in musical theater started to change and shift towards an interest in singing itself. I have more of a classical based voice, I'm a soprano, and at the time my voice teacher at that college told me that I should consider studying opera, and this is something that my private vocal coach from my hometown has told me as well. Once again, I was kind of doing what other people were telling me to do instead of doing what I really wanted to do. And I was thinking, okay, well, you know what? I don't fit in at the school. I'm not happy. I should go study opera because that's what I'm good at. So I transferred to Rutgers where I graduated and I studied classical singing for two years. It was at Rutgers that I really felt that I finally met real, true, authentic friends. I did study classical singing for two years there, but over time I started to miss theater, miss acting, miss the thing that I started doing when I was so little. And that was enjoying videos and being in front of the camera and letting my personality shine. So I started doing some local theater at the school and when I did this, I met some of the best friends I've ever met in my life. And for the first time, I met people that had similar interests to mine. There's a few people during this time period that have really helped me realize that if I just speak out about things that I like, I'll find that other people like the same things too and that it is possible for me to meet my people. And all of us will find our people in time, lovely humans. If you feel alone, if you feel like you don't fit in, you're gonna find your people. You just gotta give it time. And the best way to find your people is to be who you are. It took me a really long time to be who I was, but once I started to express to people the little things about me that I always thought were weird, I started to realize that they're not really that weird at all. And people accept you a lot better if you're just like, hey, this is me, this is what I like, this is who I am. If you don't like it, okay. If you do like it, cool, let's hang out. It's really that simple. So now I make videos with my cute stuffed animals. I wear anime shirts from my favorite movies. I still wear pigtails even though I'm a grown woman. I don't care. I express myself for who I am and I've never been happier. And that is why I wanna encourage all of you lovely humans to realize even if you go through a few years 
where you're trying to discover yourself, trying to find your confidence. It will happen in time and just know it's always better to be your true authentic self than to try to be an image of what you think you should be because that will never give you real happiness or real friendships or real relationships. So that's my story about when I was a fake person. I wasn't fake in the sense where I was mean to people or screwed people over, but I was fake in that I wasn't being the real Kelly for a really long time. And once I decided to finally become her, I've never been happier and I've never lived a more positive life. So I hope that maybe this story helped explain some things to you guys. I really hope maybe it helps some of you who might have gone through this before. And if you have, share your story, comment below, and I will comment back. I would love to hear some of your experiences because I think it's better that we all talk about these things and communicate them so that we can all help ourselves find that true love and acceptance. So until next time, Sir Sugarcane has a flight to catch. He's going on another vacation, so extravagant. And I'm still never invited. Like. I'm his mother. It was nice chatting with you guys. Remember, it's always better to be yourself and let your dork flag fly if you have one. As I always say, I think everyone has one. And I will talk to you guys next time on Kelly True Thoughts. Have a lovely day.